time to get on your feet. One, two, three, four. you meet. Everybody get up on your feet. See the light in everybody you meet. Let us be reminded of who we've come to be. We are love, we are one, one big family. Hey, hey, yeah, yeah. See the light in everybody you meet. Let us be reminded of who we come to be. We are love, we are one, one big family. Hey, hey, yeah, yeah. See the light in everybody you meet. Let us be reminded of who we've come to be. We are love, we are one, one big family. Hey, hey, yeah, yeah. Hey, 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 yeah, yeah. Hey, 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 hey. hey, hey, hey. All right. Good morning everyone. How are you today? Woo! Good morning, everyone. Are you ready to go on a journey with me? I'm ready to. Let's take a deep breath in, close your eyes, and exhale. Go, ah. You know what? Sometimes it just feels good to sigh and let it out. So let's do that again. Take another deep breath in, and then sigh on the way out. It's in this time of the service that we allow ourselves to just stop the constant cycling of ideas in our mind. To just become fully present in this moment and in this beautiful space, in this comfortable room with this comfortable air conditioning and just allowing yourself to be comfortable. Remember the very thing that's breathing you and beating your heart is breathing the person next to you. It's beating their heart as well. We come together under that one global heart right now, that one idea that we're just all one, individualized expressions of the one. Take another deep breath in. <clears throat> Exhale. Get ready, my soul. I'm diving in, get ready, my soul, I'm diving in to a deeper kind of love, to the sweetest kind of life. Get ready, get ready, my soul. Everything I've ever done and everything I've ever seen, everything I've lost or one and everything I've ever dreamed has brought me here to the sacred moment here 
to a new beginning here and I'm seeing life so clearly now please join with me get ready my soul I'm diamond in Center for Spiritual Living, Palm Desert. Welcome to this new day. As we continue in this same, same state of blessed consciousness, I invite you to take in a deep breath, a deep cleansing breath, and release anything that stands between you and knowing that there is but one life, one mind, one energy, one divine, right, perfect spirit that rules the universe. That spirit is limitless. That spirit is bold. That spirit is expansive. That spirit is whole, perfect, and complete. That spirit is God. And I'm at one with that divine spirit that moves in and around and through me, and I am knowing. I am absolutely knowing if it is true for me, it is also true for you. I, Francine Ward, I speak my word for myself and for each and every one of us knowing, absolutely knowing that we live in a universe that is big, that is bold, that is limitless, that is expansive. We live in a universe that is roomy, that makes room for each and every one of us. Each and every one of us to enjoy the benefits, the bounty that this universe has to offer. Today I have a program for living that says to me, I live in a world that absolutely makes allowances for a limitless expansion. And I am knowing if that's true for me, it's also true for you. On this day, this blessed day, I, I take one foot and I put it in front of the other. And I try something new. I experience something different. I say hello to someone I've never said hello to. On this day, I allow for limitless expansion of my mind, of my body, of my life, of my thinking. On this day, I step outside of my comfort zone and I say yes. Yes to something new. Yes to meeting someone different. Yes to having a, an amazingly expansive life. On this day, on this day, I give thanks. I give thanks for my willingness, my willingness to try something new. I give thanks for my willingness to say hello to someone that I absolutely don't know. I give thanks for my willingness to step outside of my comfort zone. On this day, I give thanks for the opportunity to be of service to my spiritual community. How blessed I am that I get to do this. And I give thanks for each and every person that's come here early today to prepare the table 
the concierge, the ushers, the audiovisual. Each and every practitioner that holds up this container called Center for Spiritual Living Palm Desert. I give thanks for the musicians that always manage to crack open my heart and just envelop my spirit. I give thanks for, for each and every minister that, that shows us day to day just how to walk, how to walk beside them, walk around them, walk through them as they do that for us. And on this day, I give thanks, a special thanks for the opportunity to have had a friendship for 25 years with our beloved, our, our, our beloved parishioner who's gone to a, another place today, Alan Goda. I give thanks for having known him for 25 years. I give thanks for those things and so much more and so much more. And so with love in my heart and gratitude in my spirit, I release my word into the law of mine, knowing, knowing that it is done. And if there's any part of whatever I've said this morning that resonates with you, I invite you to join with me and say, and so it is. In the silence there is peace. In the silence there is unspoken joy. In the silence there's release from a world full of chaos and noise. So I awake in this holy silence. I hear all that has never been said. And right here in this holy silence, we find God, and we find ourselves. In the silence there is peace. In the silence there is unspoken joy in the silence from a world full of chaos and noise so we awake in this holy silence we hear all that needs to be said and right in this holy silence, we find God when we find ourselves. Oh, and I find God when I find So <laughs> I like that. That's funny. All right. So here's, our, here's the information that we're talking about today. We've been talking for the past several months. Um, our theme for 2016 is building a world that works for everyone. Our monthly theme has been living, excuse me, loving kindness and forgiveness. Today's theme is we see ourselves as being open, receptive, and welcoming of all people, all faiths, and all paths to God. 
My talk title is actually called Open, Receptive, and Welcoming. So here's your affirmation for the day. Please say this with me together. I open my heart to embrace the divinity of each person on this path called my life. Say that one more time. I open my heart to embrace the divinity of each person on this path called my life. Interestingly enough, when you look at that graphic and you see the path moving there, it's not just the path that you're walking on. Your pathway is actually everything that's in your peripheral view, everything that you see in front of you and on the sides. So in our life, we have so many things going on in our world that it's not just what's in front of us that's happening. There are things happening on the side that, that get our attention, they garner our attention. Many times they can be upsetting. Sometimes they can be really motivating. A lot of times recently, I've noticed that they've been a little bit less than, um, how should we say, harmonious, the things that are going on on the sides. But part of our pathway is to look at all things that are happening on the path and seeing the divinity in everyone, not just the people we agree with, but people we disagree with, not with just situations that are not good or good, but the situations that aren't good, understanding that everything is a part of this path unfolding. Does that make sense? So today, when the world feels too loud, we must be quiet. When the world feels too violent, we must be peaceful. When the world seeks evil, we must seek good. The harder life gets the softer we must become. I like that. I like that because lately in the world, you can see a lot of things going on. There are a lot of things going on around us, and some people, you know, it's kind of loud, it's kind of obnoxious, and it's kind of discon there's disconcerting information, and there's a lot of imbalance. But you know what? I don't have to participate in that. Where there's that loud feeling, I can allow myself to go to my quiet space. I don't have to go into that, that argument. I don't have to go into that chaos. That's voluntary. Walking into that is voluntary. I don't have to, when the world feels violent and there's violent acts, we, don't ha we have to go to a place of peace, recognizing that there is always more peace than there are, quote, evil acts, if you will. There's always more of our stuff than there is of that stuff. Does that make sense? And then finally... Uh, when the world sees, um, when the life gets harder, I have to get softer. You know, I, I, I've, been, I've been watching people engage all over in my personal life and in, in you know, social media and all that. There's just this large about amount of time people are engaging in arguments. And I see people getting harder and harder. And it, it seems like it's, people are getting more frustrated and frustrated. And, you know, the more frustrated they get, the more posts they make and the more arguments they make. And then this just goes back and forth and back and forth. And it feels very uncomfortable to watch this go banter back and forth. So the harder life gets, the softer I have to become. So when life seems really hard and people seem hard, that just means I'm not being soft enough. That doesn't mean you're condoning what's going on, but what it means is I can't I can't dive in to that calcification, if you will, of those, those beliefs and ideology so that I'm part of the problem. Does that make sense? All right. All of us are born the same, naked and speechless. Right? Every one of us was, you didn't come out fully clothed. And I dare say, that, I know some of you are going, really? I thought I had this makeup on when I woke up. Okay. <laughs> That hair color was the only real hair color you've ever had. Okay, so <laughs> naked and speechless. And also, I would dare say that we weren't real smart when we were born. We had the intellect, we had the potential, but nothing was developed. We knew how to cry when we were uncomfortable, and, we, and whatever parent that took care of us had to figure out what that cry meant. Was it, you know, you needed to be changed, or was it needed to be, you needed to be fed? So we had to work on that, but we were all born the same. Okay. So let's take that as the backdrop. We're all born the same, naked and speechless and working on our intellect. Can we agree on that? Okay, so that everyone who comes on my pathway, not just on the path itself, but even on the sides, I have a commonality with them. What's that? They were born naked and speechless too, with their intellect developing. And our intellect developed over time. We started believing things when we didn't even realize we were believing things. We were just living our life and belief systems and patterns began to form in our head. Belief systems and patterns are what, governed, what governs our life now. So whether we recognize it or not, as we were developing, belief systems and patterns and ideas came into our mind that created how we look at the world today. So we have a commonality with everyone, not just the people we like, but every human being. Next thing, you are not getting on the train, you are the train. This idea that I've got to get on the train it means that I'm not 
who I am. I am already on the train. We are the train. And interestingly enough, spiritual, spiritual leaders, if you will, all of you, spiritual beings, we are the train. We have to set the example of not moving into those places of darkness, not moving into those places of judgment, not moving into those places where we're angry with people or feeling bitter. Bitter, it's really funny. I, um, lately, I've been having this little thing that I've been doing in sign language, the letter B, it, B bitter, starts with the letter B, and this is the letter B in sign language. So I find myself a lot um, going when I, around people and I feel their energy going like this, bitter, <laughs> bitter, bitter. In fact, I've taught a few of my friends that when we're like, we're going, bitter. And when my friends are acting out, I'm like, bitter. Party of two, seat over here, right? Bitter. I have to become softer, but I have to recognize that a lot of times this is me. So I'm on the train too. I'm not on the train. We are the train. And we can lead by consciousness and understanding. Again, that doesn't mean you're condoning certain behaviors, but it says, I'm not going to lead from a place of bitterness. I'm on the train of love. I'm on the love train. Woo-hoo! Okay? Next thing. Look at the person and you see the worst. Look at the potential and you reveal the best. Sometimes when we look at other people, we can see the worst in them, especially this time of year. We can look at people and go, man, really? Seriously? Okay. Are we looking at the person or are we looking at their potential? Maybe we start looking at people's potential. We all have a history. We all have a past. So maybe if you looked at me, you'd go, oh my God, he's a mess. But can you see my potential? Let's look past the person and see the potential. Let's look past the person and see the potential. In our own life, in our family life, in our work life, in the life that's going on outside of here. Let's look at the potential of people, not necessarily the person. Because sometimes when I look at the person, I see the worst of them. I start seeing judgment, which is my own stuff coming up in them. Does that make sense? Together, please. I open my heart to embrace the divinity of each person on this path called my life. Dr. Holmes said, the universe is impersonal. It gives to all. It is no respecter of persons. It values each alike. Its nature is to impart. Ours is to receive. When we stand in the light, we cast a shadow across the pathway of our own experience. Interestingly enough, I, that's one of my favorite quotes. It's at the very beginning of the textbook. The universe is impersonal. It doesn't care what color you are. It doesn't care what country you're from. It doesn't care what religion you believe in or faith, tradition. It doesn't matter. It only see, and it's not even respecters of person. It just knows you are in its image and likeness and all that it is, you have the potential to be. And I say the potential because many, many times we don't live up to our potential. The potential is there, but because of our belief systems, our patterns and the way we're reacting, we're not living up to our truest potential. So it values each one of us alike. Its nature is to impart and ours is to receive. Now, sometimes that's a really good thing, but if you're kind of like me and you, you people who've been here for a long, you, you know this, I'm really good. I'm one of those people, give, 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 right? But when it comes time to receive, I'm like, nope, I'm good. I don't open myself up to receiving. So part of the nature, the balance of that is that not only do I have to give, but I have to be open to receive from all of you and, and from nature and from God. And so all of, since all of you are made in the image and likeness and you are the action of, we have to be open to not just the giving, but the receiving of those things. And we cast that shadow on, of our experience. You know, I'm standing in light right now. So when I'm standing in the light, behind me, my past is just a shadow. Um, I really don't want to try to follow my shadow. I don't mind it being behind me. But there are a lot of people who are so destined to stay and fixate on the shadow that they can't move forward or do it safely because they're fixated on looking back behind them at what happened in their world. The only thing we can do is look into the light and potential of what can be, not what has been. What has been is over. Histor like Dr. Tom used to say, yesterday ended last night. It ended last night. I can choose if I want to bring that into my day today, or I can say, yesterday ended last night. Remember that? 
When we feel ourselves pulling away in judgment, Dr. Holmes says this, the thing to do is not to try and unify with people. And I thought to be, wait a minute, we've always talked about unifying, you know? Unify. So when I read this quote, I was sort of was taken back by this. But then if you read further on, it says, the thing, is not to, see, the thing to do is not to try and unify with people, but with the principle of life behind all people and things. My problem is when I try to unify with people, sometimes if we don't agree with them, it's really hard to unify with them. Because no matter what I do, there's still that thing between you and me that we disagree does that make sense? Does anyone ever have that problem? Oh, please. Does anybody have that problem? Are you serious? Look, I know you all have verbal skills. You're really good at it, you know? Does anyone have this problem of that? Okay, thank you. Hello. I know it's hot outside, but we don't need more caffeine. All right. But if I align with the principle of life, meaning if I align with your divinity is my divinity, that's behind all things, then I don't necessarily have to agree and unify, but I have to see you as part of the whole. I have to see you as part of the whole. As much as we would like to shove people out of that circle, we can't. It's all part of oneness. It's the principle of life. So take a deep breath in. And sigh, uh, yeah, like this, uh, <laughs> seriously, I have to do this again, seriously? He keeps telling me to do stuff and I don't want to do it anymore. <laughs> Can I just sell everything and go to St. Thomas and sell volleyballs on the beach? It just sounds so much more fun, much more entertaining. You have an energy signature. You and I have an energy signature, and we know that other people have energy signatures because when we're with them, we feel their energy. Well, you're bringing in the same kind of energy. You and I have an energy signature in everything that we do, and we bring that to our, our daily lives, if you will. From the moment we wake up all through our day, you are, bringing your, you are leaving your energy signature wherever you go. Now I would ask you, and here's, <laughs> here's kind of a challenge for me. Have you ever had to sign escrow documents? Okay, you know how you're supposed to sign your name the same way, like 300 times, and your hand gets sore, and next thing you know, the, 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 the notary goes, uh, these are not the same people, and yet I'm sitting right in front of them going, I'm just tired. It's like, so your signatures have to match. What a metaphysical lesson that is. Sometimes my signature doesn't match, and when it doesn't match, Usually it is because I'm tired. I'm tired of fighting. I'm tired of disagreement. I'm tired of the, the lack of harmony. I'm tired of the imbalance. I'm just tired. And so I have to watch by how my physical state impacts my signature, my energy signature. And what am I bringing? How am I signing into the room? And how am I signing out of the room? Is there a consistency there? Do people want to be within my energy because of that's, that's my imprint? Or are they running away from me because my energy is not what they want to be around? So ask yourself, if you're leaving your signature, if you enter in with the signature and exit with the signature, how is that working out for you? How is that, how is that working for you? How, are you? how are you perceived? How do you feel like you are in that situation? What is your energy signature? Say that with me, please. I am, excuse me, I open my heart to embrace the divinity of each person on this path called my life. Paul said, I must die every day. In scripture, we read, I must die every day. And I believe that. I believe that every day, some, when, I wait, when I go to bed at night, there are things that need to be laid to rest. And then I wake up and I feel the need to wake them up. And I'm not talking about a person, although sometimes they resemble one. Do you see what I'm saying? So I'm choosing in my life, while I move through this path of welcoming all people and faith traditions, I'm choosing whether or not to wake up an old belief system. And now, a lot of times I'll wake up with the best of intentions. Anybody? You, first of all, I'm going to work out today. Yes, I'm going to eat right today right? Yes. Until the donut shows up. And then you're like, 
nope, not working out, not doing any of that, okay? So I set up with the best intentions, and then something will click me back into my old behavior pattern. And what I thought I buried, I didn't bury after all. What I thought let die, the part of me let die that was feeling that way, I just, I just, I, I just resuscitated it right there. And I breathed life back into it. And as soon as I breathe that life back into it, guess where I am? Right back where I started from. It's as if my pathway, instead of going down, just circles around and says, you're going to repeat this again. Anyone ever feel like you're just kind of circling and not getting on with the path? Oh, good. Three. Good. This is good. Good. Thank you. The principle of oneness is at the core of our teaching. Leads us, to an, leads us to an understanding that I am one, excuse me, that I am you, you are me, we are one. The principle of oneness, the principle of oneness, and now this is what I would say is probably been my biggest mantra lately, especially given what's happening in the world outside of this building, especially given the tensions and energies and things that happen in my, what happened in my workplace, not here, my other workplace, given the tensions that sometimes happen in my family, given tensions that are happening in the political climate, you can apply it wherever you want to apply it. I am you, you are me, we are one. Can I look at everybody squarely, even the people I disagree with and maybe don't have a real fondness for, can I say that and mean that? I am you, you are me, we are one. Say that with me, please. I am you, you are me, we are one. Say that the next time somebody says something that really gets under your skin. <laughs> Repeat it until you believe it, until you're gnashing your teeth to believe it, because that's what it happens. We have to be able to look at that and go, you know what? I am you, you are me, we are one. Say it again. I am you, you are me, we are one. <sighs> Now you're going to say, but I'm not one with them. <laughs> I'm okay being one with him and her and them, but I'm not okay with being one over there with them because they're, no, no, can't do that. <laughs> Guess what your homework is? I am you, you are me, we are one. Makes your intestines bunch up just a little bit, doesn't it? <laughs> Yeah, does mine. And you have a choice. You could give it lip service or life service. Which one are you going to give it? Lip service or life service? life service? Thank you. For those of you who are thinking lip service, you're thinking the superficial change, which is okay, but it's not going to work. You have to go beyond the lip service of things and make it your life service to do these things. We're called to do these things so that we can embrace the totality of humanity. We talked a couple weeks about, ago about being disenfranchised and, and people who are feeling like they're on the outside and how do we bring the outside in? And people who fight to get on the inside are really just fighting because they've been pushed to the outside and they're just trying to get with us on the inside. Well, you know what? There is no us. We are the train. We are all one. So this whole idea is I have to make this part of my life service to see people in that capacity, not just make it lip service. Lip service is really nice. It gets you through a conversation, but then you have to look at yourself in the mirror and go, I didn't believe a word I said. So make this part of your life service. Does that make sense? Another thing too, hear the biography, not the ideology. Ooh. Let me say that again. Learn to hear the biography, not the ideology. Work to hear the person, not the opinion. Ooh. Yeah, so this is what I've been challenged with. I actually spoke with someone about an incident that happened in another country, and we were talking about it, and I was just trying to really understand. I wasn't trying to understand. I was listening. Listening with my own belief system, listening with my own values judgment, listening with my own perception. So I really wasn't listening, I was just sort of observing, if you will. And then what I realized is that I actually wasn't, I was, I, was, I was tuned into the ideology instead of listening to the biology of what really happened to this individual. Now they may not have responded in a way that I thought was appropriate in my mind, but after listening to what they were talking about, not, not their ideology, but what had actually happened to them personally, I can see their frustration 
with how the world was unfolding for them. And so I had a unique perspective because it wasn't just about trying to understand them and their ideology. It was about listening to the person. Not about their opinions, but to that person. Because the person has an individual story that can't be lumped in to an entirely big umbrella called ideology. Does that make sense? If you agree, excuse me, if you argue for your limitations, you will get to keep them. In fact, they will go stronger and stronger until they have a chokehold on you. Say that with me. If you argue for your limitations, you get to keep them. Actually, turn to your neighbor and say that. If you argue for your limitations, you get to keep them. In fact, they will grow stronger and stronger until they have a chokehold on you. Have you noticed that? So if you want to argue for I'm too old, I'm too this, I'm too this, I'm too that, I'm too blah, 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 you got it. Gift it, put a, I'll put it in a, in, a, in a Tiffany blue bag. It will put a little bow on it because you're arguing for it, which means you got it and you're going to have it abundantly. It's going to keep resurfacing in your life. So if you want to argue for your limitations on the things that you can't do, I'll get you, you got them. Now, eventually, you're going to be, they will choke you. You will feel constricted and restrained until you're frustrated, but you're still going to want them. So you have to stop arguing for your limitations and start agreeing to your potential. Make sense? It's not the person, it's the potential. It's not the worst of people, it's the potential. Stop arguing for your limitations, start seeing the potential. Every next level of your life will demand a different version of you. Because of this, think about it. As a culture, as a world, as individuals, as families, every next level of your life will demand a different version of you. And when you're giving birth to something, I think I haven't said this yet, when you're giving birth to something, my understanding is it's not a comfortable thing. Anyone? Women? Anyone? All right? My understanding is that giving birth is not comfortable. Okay? Change is not comfortable. What we're, what's going on in the, in the energy of this country may not feel comfortable, but it's requiring us to step up to a different version of who we are. Every time I've had a, 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 a great demand on me, Joe, personally, it's because there's a different version of Joe about to be born into a new situation. So I have to accept those challenges as part of this process of giving birth. The discord will become calm and harmonious, but it has to move through the process of birthing itself first. So when we're in the middle of the birthing of a new, new idea, it can feel uncomfortable, and it will most of the time. But understand that every, every next level that we want to go on is going to actually demand that I show up differently. Everything that I've ever wanted to do has demanded that I show up not looking at my shadow, but I have to show up as a new version of me to, to rise to that occasion, to not only see the potential, but to actually execute it. Make sense? Together, please. I open my heart to embrace the divinity of each person on this path called my life. Do you see that path right there? Sometimes it looks, it looks like it's really easy. It's right in front of you. And sometimes that path twists around a corner and you can't see where that pathway leads. But you still walk it because there's something intuitive knowing that, okay, if I just keep doing what I'm doing, that path is going to lead me right to where I want to go. See that graphic right there? You can't see the path in some areas, but you kind of get a vision of it off in the distance, but, I, but you know it swerves to the left a little bit and it kind of disappears. So maybe, just maybe, in your own life, there are times when we don't see the path clearly. We're on one, and I can see a couple steps in front of me, but the other one is sort of behind something. Faith is what moves you to continue walking there. Faith is the thing that, that, that pushes us, that divine urge that pulls us into that vision of what we can't see around the corner. So what I'm choosing to see right now is our congregation opening up to all kinds of things, all kinds of new people showing up, all kinds of new energy showing up. 
I don't know how it's going to get there, but I see there. I'm on the path. We're on the path. Now I just got to figure out and just keep walking because it will happen. We honor all people of all faith traditions. Again, we say we're not the way. Please, I would never have the way. Sometimes I'm a bigger mess than all of you, so this is good. But what I can tell you is that we are a way. We are a way, and for a lot of people, it's becoming a really good way and a good path to be on. It may not have all the answers. We're not supposed to have all the answers right in front of us. If we would, it would be really robotic. And I don't, wanna, I don't think people want to live life as, as robots. They want to actually have the spontaneous thing. So it's open to all that interpretation. But the first thing you have to do is recognize that not only is that path there in front of you, but so are those trees and the grass and the moss and every part about it makes up that path. You can't get rid of those things. They're there. So I have to learn to live next to them. Does that make sense? I can't change everything, but I can change how I feel about walking around in it. That's my job. That's not anyone else's job but me. That's an inside job. And so ends your lesson. Thank you, everybody. Have a great week. (laughs)